a chieftain of the All Progressive Congress APC, Charles Idahosa, and a former political advisor to Oshomole on Tuesday warned that any attempt by the party's national chairman, Adams Oshomole, to circumvent the 2020 re-election bead of Governor Godwin Obasaki may spell doom for the APC in Edo State and the South-South region. I still have in the studio Barista Emeka Mwadioke. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. So, Looking at the situation, um, this Mr. Idahosa had said, and I like to quote him, that nobody can push Obaseki out of his party except they want to finish the APC in the South South and the Southeast. And he said, as we speak now, only Edo State is being governed by an APC government. If by any act of omission or commission they push him out of the party, he says, that's the end of it. Let's talk about the beginning of this crisis, just before the elections. There seemed to be a bit of a drama between um, Governor Basaki and the party chairman, Adam Sushimole. Uh Yes, um, I think it was essentially after the election, really, because uh, uh, obviously uh, Adam Sushimole was quite uh, supportive of the candidacy of uh, Obaseki. You know, to the extent that he even uh, sidelined his own deputy, the deputy governor, you know, who was keen to succeed him. And um, I know that, you know, the two now had a uh, head to head, the deputy and Obaseki. Then Obaseki, of course, backed by uh, Oshomole, you know, got the party's ticket and went on to win. Um, so, um, but since then, I guess uh, they've uh, fallen apart, godfather and godson. So, and um, at any rate, you see this pattern, which has uh, played. Yeah, but the, the key thing was that, I mean, it, it went to a point where we had the National Assembly trying to wade in um, as to saying the National Assembly, the State House of Assembly had to function, that it wasn't functioning because a few people were inducted at odd hours of the day, yes. and the rest of them are still to be. And then the ones allegedly that have been inducted or been inaugurated mm -hmm. into the house are somewhat loyal to the governor. Yes. But then there are other people who have been, who have not yet been inaugurated, but were also elected by the people of River yes. State. That is the issue on the ground, first exactly. things first. Exactly. Um, yes, so it was uh, post the election that you now had the issue of the uh, inauguration of the assembly, which is where they now fell apart. Because uh, you see a situation where um, nine out of 24 of the elected uh, the lawmakers uh, elect, so to speak, um, were inaugurated in the uh, around 9 p.m. or something like that. So uh, on the basis of the uh, purported proclamation by mm -hmm. the uh, the state governor, you know. So, um, but obviously it's it's all. Uh, like I was saying, a power game. Basically, um, the governor is looking for control, you know, control of the house. Uh, Oshomole on his own part is trying to control the house and uh, probably by proxy uh, the governor. So uh, that's where we are presently. And uh, you're also aware that the court has also validated the position of the governor to the effect that yeah, you cannot issue a, a subsequent proclamation that by so doing, you probably be extending the tenure of the current people who have been sworn in. Um, so that's where we are presently. And um, how it plays out is uh, it's anybody's guess. Attempts by the National Assembly to wade into the matter has been rebuffed, by the way. Yes. They, keep, they, has, they keep going to get court orders to resist the National Assembly getting in the way. Yes. But how do you go ahead with the business of the day when nine out of 24 people in the, who are duly elected are, not, are the only ones working and the rest of them are not working? Does this not affect the people of Edo State or shine a bad light on the people of Edo State? Uh, it's, it goes back to uh, the, the politics of, uh, of Nigeria you know, uh, we, which we've had uh, in some of the other states. You see people uh, carrying mace and even breaking some of the others' head and all that. 
we saw that in river sometime we saw that uh, the chidi lloyd matter and all that you know so and several other instances you know then of course maybe governors engineering the removal of speakers and all that so for me it's it's a matter of um again um nascent democracy like you say you know um, we, we are not there yet. Uh, it's almost as if... Uh, but should this be an excuse? Every time we, we, we circumvent the law or we do the wrong thing, um, we keep saying that, oh, America took 200 years to get the kind of democracy that they have. Uh, it will take us a while. Can we keep making these excuses when we know what to be done and not do it? But again, should Adam Sushumale be towing this line instead of the party, I mean, he's the president, he's the chairman of the party. Should there not be a meeting of sorts uh, that would maybe mend whatever broken fences? Although there was a cameo, you know, meeting of sorts, and they said they had no problem, but has, it hasn't solved yeah. the issue in the state house of assembly. What are the, what are the solutions or what are the, angles can he come from or both of them come from to address this issue i think um, at this stage the um, what we have on ground is the the court judgment is a court judgment because the deputy speaker went to court alongside uh, a member of the house mm -hmm. and the federal high court port harcourt sitting in port harcourt held that uh, you know the the proclamation as done by the governor is uh, valid and binding mm -hmm. to to that extent uh, that's where we are presently as regards the state of the law so unless and until someone goes to appeal court to vacate that order that's the situation so um, basically what they probably be looking for is uh, a political solution but as regards the law that is settled at least as of today uh, that there cannot be a second proclamation. The political solution and, but is what, what exactly? Yes, what, what we see, for instance, in the, in the Bauchi case, uh, because we had a similar case where, you know, again, you had um, the minority, you know, electing a speaker. Uh, interestingly, it's a PDP uh, governor, but the speaker that was elected by, you know, probably that group loyal to the governor, uh, was uh, an APC uh, speaker, but notwithstanding, the APC P, uh, members, the majority who were not inaugurated, you know, uh, refused to recognize. So we had um, two speakers at some point. But what they did by way of solution is to accept to be inaugurated by the, the, the speaker who has been inaugurated. Um, so that way, of course, they became members of the of the of the house. Um, although I know they've been moving around, they recently even met Mr. President to probably push their case as regards why there probably has to be some other negotiation and political arrangement to uh, get the majority speaker, so called, to resume or assume the office. So, uh, uh, what I think is probably what is going to happen in a those states because I think I want to align with uh, the courts uh, that you can't really have a second proclamation uh, because once a proclamation is done, it's done. So uh, they have to ha find a political solution to that uh, because again, like the court validly said, uh, you can't, it's probably prolonging the, the tenure of the people who have been sworn in and that could create all kinds of uh, legal uh, issues. Yes, and, and of course also stretch the political calendar. Exactly. But let's look at someone who um, responded to Idahosa's claims that if a, uh, Governor Basaki is is uh, um, not left to do his job. He pub the APC might probably lose the South South and the Southeast. Now, uh, um, a former commissioner and member elect of the State House of Assembly, Washington Osao Sifo, uh, faulted Idahosa's assertions about Oshomole. He said Governor Basaki is a victim of wicked advisers with very inordinate ambition, which will not benefit him and his government. Do you think it's bad counsel 
that has led them here. But then, if we're talking about bad counsel on the side of the side of the governor, what about the the party leader? Yes, I think bad counsel or not, I think uh, basically what we're seeing is power play. It's it's just uh, it's just simple power. At the play. detriment of the people of Edo State. Uh, definitely, at the end of the day, it's always the when the, the the two elephants fight, as they say, is the people that uh, suffer. Let's uh, hope that oh well, the business of uh, lawmaking is uh, going on in Edo State. You know um, that the the crisis is not affecting uh, the business of. But again, if you look at it, the government is running. Um, People have argued that, okay, the members who were elected because they've not been sworn in, they are not earning salary and they're not enjoying the park size of office. But, of course, when they get sworn in, they'll get their arrears and all that. We know how it works in Nigeria. At any rate, they are entitled to that. But that said, um, we've, we've uh, seen even on the political, where they're talking about giving the governor uh, the unbodied treatment and all that. So. I guess I see a situation where basically the governor is fighting for his political life. So he's, um, he basically wants to be in control of the House. And he doesn't trust that if the House leadership is put in the hands of uh, uh, Mr. Oshomole, that he will uh, even uh, probably not be impeached or get uh, a second term. So I think that's probably the crux of the of the matter. But where do the people of Edo, I keep asking this question every time we yes. have this conversation, yes. where do the people come in? I, I mean, I, I, I ask this question because government is meant for the people. Yes. Where do the people come here? I haven't heard that they're protesting or asking questions. Maybe they are in yes. their privacies, but where do the people come in here? Because like I said, there are people who were elected duly to serve constituencies yes. and they're not able to do that job because of some imbroglio between the governor and his superior. So where does leadership come in here? Where, I mean, accountability and responsibility to the people, the electorate. Maybe those who are going to court will say that's why they're fighting for it, but for the governor, yes. he's the governor of a do state and these m members of the assembly are representing different places, but he is, he has that sole responsibility. So. Where, how does he show his people that he's here for their benefit and not for his political life, like you said? Um, from, from, from what uh, I perceive, um, I, I get the impression that the governor is a bit popular to some extent, uh, especially in the Bini area and all that, you know. But that said, Again, it goes back to the distortions and the dysfunctionality of our political experience. Because if this were to probably happen in more, you know, more advanced democracies, of course, at the end of the day, someone has to pay, you know, um, pay politically. In which case, you know, you either it will don't cost get both sides yes, something. exactly. You either don't get reelected. Or one way or the other, you get, you know, punished, you know. But we, we, we know that in this climb, it's probably not about the, the, the power of the people or the electorate to decide uh, a lot of these things, you know. You even hear a situation where they're already, you know, doing all kinds of permutations on how the governor may or may not return and all that. And before you know it, that's really what plays out. So. Yes, you will expect the people to uh, maybe protest in one way or the other. Maybe, of course, some of them are making some interventions online and thereabout. But I guess at the end of the day, they're basically looking at it like it's their, more like their, their business and their show. Mm -hmm. Godfather got some fighting. We know they're going to one way settle their, 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 their issues and uh, we move on. Okay, let's talk about the South-South and the Southeast that the um, chieftain of the APC was making reference to. Yes. On one hand, I can tell Aquaibom, Rivers, Bielsa, um, Delta, uh, Delta is a core. These are states that are all PDP, but for a dose state. As he mentioned rightly, that is the only state that has an APC governor. 
And River State is they're still trying to fight for the soul of River State, APC wise. Is there really hope for the APC in the South South as we speak right now, looking at it politically and looking at, at those states in the South South? And then Cross River is also yes, has a PDP governor. Mm -hmm. So if they're talking about the soul of the APC in the South South, was there any hope? Or is there, will there be any hope for the APC so far? Looking at what's happening at the federal, all the way trickling down to the state, yes. is there a future for the APC? Uh, it's a function of, you know, their, the ability of, um, of the APC to uh, do one or two things. Uh, it's also a function of even how people perceive whether the federal government is working and delivering on the democracy dividends and all that. And again, the caliber of people they have on ground to drive their, 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 their candidates and all that. So, um, but at the end of the day, you also cannot discount the fact that, you know, um, with uh, Jonathan, uh, the former president, the, the PDP was able to build a kind of groundswell of uh, support in the South-South. And uh, it will take some uh, real uh, task to undo that, uh, except over some period of time. And uh, again, like I said, if you, people are able to track really that you've done one or two things, and even, again, even you look at some of the states that uh, maybe even the APC has run, you look at IMO. Um, I'm not sure the vibes coming out of there is so uh, so fantastic. Then you look at this crisis now in Edo State. Then you even look at all the other states well, you're River talking State about. Well, River State also is still having its problems. They lost all their seats because of the drama between the Cuckoo Peter side and, of course, exactly. the so Everywhere you go, you see a kind of... Uh, and the, the interesting thing also is that their inability and lack of capacity to you know, resolve some of these uh, matters, uh, you know, crisis, in, 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 in intra-party crisis. For instance, the issue you mentioned in, uh, in River State, why just couldn't the, the two gentlemen agree? And uh, they would rather cede the, the seat to uh, the opposition than, than agree. And you see it uh, all over the place. So uh, it's definitely a challenge. And um, again, uh, for instance, in that Edo, you see that it was even only uh, the uh, Edo North that uh, Oshomole was able to, senatorial zone, right, that was mm -hmm. able to pull out. The Edo South is PDP, uh, Edo Central is PDP. So it's a major challenge for them. And then with this crisis now, uh, the party is probably going to be further divided uh, down the line. So, so all of this you're saying to say that there is not necessarily hope for the APC in the South South to capture it anytime soon? Uh, it's difficult. It's a difficult task. How they, if they're able to get their act together and put their house in order, they may be able to maybe nick one, one or two states. But um, remember, it's one over six. Mm -hmm. So it may actually end up being zero over six. Oh, wow. Uh, yes. Well, Vice uh, Mayor Emeka Mwadioke is a legal practitioner. Thank you very much for speaking for us. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we have to end it on that very gloomy note for the APC. But before I go, I'd like to give you my take. First and foremost, I don't know where in the Constitution that protests are not allowed. We are allowed to peacefully protest for whatever reasons, as ridiculous or stupid or unnecessary as they are, people are allowed to protest. So federal government of Nigeria and the Nigeria police force, there is nowhere in the constitution where we have to come to you for permits before we go and protest. You are law enforcement agents. You're supposed to know what the law says. We should not be telling you what the law says. But in this case, maybe, permit me, I will educate you, Nigeria police. We don't need a permit from you. It is our fundamental human rights to associate and gather peacefully and of course, our only tool in a democratic system to get our government's attention is a protest. Yes, a peaceful protest, underline the word. And moving on to a dose state uh, between the drama between the former governor and the sitting governor, it's high time that this be resolved for the benefit of the people of a dose state. Proper governance needs to take place and you cannot have one aspect of the government functioning and the other half past dead. 
do something about it. My name is Mary Anakul. Have a lovely day.